Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Lily. I'm a certified health and nutrition life coach and certified keto nutrition coach. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between the lion's diet, the carnivore diet, and the hyper carnivore diet, and which one would be best for you. So to start, I did not make up these definitions. I did not make up these words, and I'm just going to use these words based off their literal definition. So the lion's diet, which was founded or coined the name lion's diet was from Michaela Peterson. She's someone who had different ailments throughout her life and she had severe arthritis and joint pain and inflammation. And so she found by eliminating more foods and going on different diets, ruminants meat that includes beef, bison, goat, and lamb, and wild meats, including elk, venison, and antelope, and then water and salt, that's what worked best for her. And then when it comes to a carnivore diet, that would include all animal products. So that would include fish, so sardines, salmon, seafood, including lobster tails, clams, oysters. It would include poultry, so chicken, turkey, pheasant, quail. It would include pork, eggs, rabbit, alligator, any, any and all animal products. As far as hyper carnivore, you would think it would mean extra carnivore or some sort of hyper version of a carnivore, but according to the definition, a hyper carnivore is an animal that can digest both plants and animals, and 70% of its diet comes from animal products, and the other 30% of the diet comes from plant foods. So that would include fruits, nuts, berries, seeds, vegetables, coffee, adding seasonings onto the meat, but it would be a one whole food ingredient because out in nature, animals only have access to whole foods, not pizzas and chips and brownies and things like that. The reason why people move to these kinds of diets is because a number of reasons, but specifically I would say it's because people are trying to figure out what foods may cause certain reactions or just in general, they want to eat more of a whole food kind of lifestyle, or it's just simple and easy and they can get all the vitamins and minerals their body needs from just animal products. Um, but I would say that for people, there's kind of in my mind, fruits and veggies, are the only things that I would consider whole foods that would be more ancestral or primal or whatever we want to call it, but foods that are more natural in nature that people would, would argue fruits and veggies are healthy. The reason why sometimes people will take out the vegetables is because it can cause them to have a leaky gut, candida, ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, inflammation in general, or just it causes something that will make them feel like they want to try and eliminate the vegetables. Some of the reasons why people might want to eliminate fruit is because it does have or can have a lot of sugar in it. And so maybe for someone who's a diabetic or who has high blood sugar, they might want to avoid fruit. For other people, I have clients who tell me that they, if they're on a weight loss journey, they just can't have one cup of blueberries. They have, it'll create a kind of binge eating habit in them where they'll end up eating an entire bag of blueberries. Other people find that if they have some fruit, it might cause their mental health issues to come back, whether that's depression, anxiety, or OCD. So there are a, a whole bunch of, this is not all of the reasons why people might wanna consider eliminating fruit or some veggies, and whether that's temporary or permanent, there are people who eat all of these different kinds of diets and who live a healthy life and who get their blood markers done regularly and find that everything is normal and they're doing well. So I don't think people have to have fruits and veggies to be healthy, but there are a lot of people who might start by eating a lion's or a carnivore diet, whether that's for 30 days, 60 days, and then they might wanna incorporate um, seasonings or fruits or coffee or other kinds of foods and just see how it goes for them and see what works best for them. So when it comes to what is the best diet for you, I would personally start with either a lion's diet or a carnivore diet just to give me a base of which foods cause me certain reactions. And then at that point, after 30 to 60 days, I would then personally stop calling it a diet and start calling it a lifestyle that's personalized for me and what's sustainable for me. So some people find that if they eat a carnivore diet that they then start reintroducing maybe onion powder and parsley and then they'll have some coffee and then they can, it's easier to isolate which thing is causing the reaction. So if they start with carnivore, then they slowly reintroduce foods and then they find what's actually going to be sustainable for them. Other people that eat a carnivore diet, they love it. And then they eat now a carnivore lifestyle and they do it forever. But for other people, if they want to have more variety, other flavors, then they just use the carnivore diet as a tool to then figure out what is going to be a personalized diet for them that works well for them. And that's why when it comes to what is the best diet for you, I would argue it's your diet. For me, I eat the Lily Kane diet. There is no specific word or definition that I'm strictly following. 
It's just what's sustainable and works best for me. And it's always going to evolve and it's always going to change over time. So I would argue the best diet for you is your diet. But in order to figure out what would be the, that diet, it would be to maybe start with a lion's or carnivore diet. And then if I want to continue, great. If it makes me happy, awesome. It is. These are sustainable ways that people eat and have great blood markers and feel amazing. So I would start there. And then at that point, if I want to introduce other foods and those other foods work and they add more health and more vitality and more happiness, then great. But that's where I would start. I hope this clears up some of the air on what are these different kinds of diets? What do they mean? How do I know which one's best for me?